everybody, and thank you for joining us back here at CBLT's channel. We're, of course, sitting here once again with Peter. And Peter, tell us about the guitar and the jersey in the background to kick us off. Well, I'm at the office today, which during COVID is a rare experience. I was collecting some of the stuff to take back home. <clears throat> That's a Martin 12 that I picked up in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, the jersey is from uh, the captain of the wild, uh, Koivu, who just retired last year, I believe. I got that in Foley, in Hearst, Ontario, from Claude Giroux, who is the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, and he's from Hearst. The what? painting is from Schumacher of the world famous Hollinger head frame. Um, a lot of pictures of, of that have been taken over the years, and then some assorted memorabilia on the wall. Wonderful, wonderful. Glad to hear. I also have a Martin 12 string, so I can definitely testify at least to their beautiful sound. So then I figured we'd have a conversation today about commodities as a whole and getting into some of the battery metals okay. now. Now, there's been a lot going on in terms of conjecture of what's going to happen in 2022 with these. Obviously, there's always a crowd of people saying prices go up, another crowd saying prices go down. On the argument the prices go up, obviously, demand is increasing significantly. On the prices go down side, people are saying a lot of the supply chain issues are going to be relieved in 2022. So where do you sit on that, Peter? Well, every metal is different, and uh, the future is notoriously hard to predict. But one thing that is going to happen is inflation. So let's start with the broad economics of the globe. Mm -hmm. These are not local phenomena. We will have global inflation next year, which means the price of everything will cost more. Um, whether it's destructive inflation and hyperinflation or stagflation, I don't know, it's out of my pay grade, but inflation is going to happen. Typically when you have inflation, prices of the commodities go up with gold and silver leading the charge. Um, but then you have to look at infrastructure issues related to the Green Revolution. What do you need for the Green Revolution? Well, just about everything. You need more copper. You absolutely need more cobalt. You can tell how much the world needs cobalt because uh, the person of the year for Time Magazine keeps telling us how much he wants to get away from cobalt. Every battery day is, we're trying to find an alternative to cobalt, yeah. and they can't. There isn't anything that works with sufficient energy density power a vehicle. You can find them for scooters or your uh, uh, Ryobi drill, but for a vehicle with all of that mass, you need the energy per, uh, that contributed to by cobalt. Uranium is going to have a strange year. Hmm. I had been on record as saying 2021 was going to be uranium's year. I'm it had a good year, didn't have a great year. I thought it was going to have a great year because if we're going to go green, that electricity has to come from somewhere. Hmm. If six cars on my street go electric, they pretty much tie up the grid for my neighborhood. So how are we going to generate that electricity and then deliver it to the end user? Uh, there, is a, there are a couple of cities in North Russia that are powered by portable nuclear reactors. The same reactor that's inside the nuclear subs uh, built by the United States. It's a proven technology. It's an easy technology. And according to Jack Lifton, it can power between 10 and 20,000 people, which is astonishing. So we could drop one in your hometown in Ohio. We can drop one in Ontario. We can drop one in Hamilton. We can drop two in Toronto, but one in Montreal. You know, and, and power regionally, but to do that, we'll take more uranium. Yeah, uh, Peter, with the, on that real quick, um, I think what's interesting is while we are heading towards gr this green ideal is really catching on socially and governmentally right now. I feel like the nuclear aspect still has a little bit of a stigma that we're going to have to get past first. There is a social aspect to it. It's not like coal, where uh, uh, you know, if you really want to start a good argument with a strong environmentalist, talk about clean coal. Clean coal, which has no sulfur in it, is one of the cleanest forms of energy conversion. You and I could pour some concrete, put up some bricks, start a fire, get a fan on the top, and generate electricity with clean coal. Doesn't kick out sulfur. Some of the smoke coming out is bad because it, it looks bad because it's black, yeah. but it's clean coal. The footprint of that is negligible. And when it comes time to end its lifespan, just tear down the bricks and repurpose it for another purpose, whether that's mm -hmm. helping to build a reef out in the ocean or grinding it up again for uh, building materials. But clean coal sounds bad, right? Coal. The coal industry is such a powerful lobby because so much of it is like, I don't know, like the gun lobby or smoking, right? It's, it is bad for you. So clean coal gets lumped in with that. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a nuclear reactor, the life cycle, 
is unusual. I, I what, 20 years to build a plant, 15 years. And the amount of energy it takes to build that entire nuclear plant is astonishing with all the concrete and all the chips, the technology, everything that has to go into it. So why not just put up clean coal everywhere? Because it's not a sustainable argument. Um, yeah. It's not a popular argument. And I don't think ESG people would buy into it. Yeah, that's a good point. It seems like, yeah, the social aspect of it is, is still somewhat driving it. And it's going to take time for people to come across these ideas. So tell us about some of the other metals, some of the other predictions you see happening. Uh, I was on a phone call this morning with a group of rare earth experts, mm -hmm. of which I was the dumbest one there. So I was happy to learn from everybody else. And um, the rare earths are a funny beast. You can't produce out of a deposit until you have a client. You can't have a client until you show you can produce. It's not like gold where, Mike, if you and I had a gold mine and we were producing gold, we could leave it at my front door and somebody will come by and pick it up because gold is gold is gold. Yeah. All the rare earths are different. They appear in different formulations. They're, they're in different host rock. And what you process at the end is different. So it's a lot like graphite. You need to have a client before you can get into full-time production. So the, the path for rare earth companies generally is get somebody who's interested, build a pilot plant, show that you can make this much of what they need. They then give you money so you can build a plant that's this big so you can make this much of what they need and then they buy it from you. Okay. It's, yeah, it's much more algorithmic at that point. Yeah. Recursive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a strange way of doing it, but it's the only way of doing it. It's that way for phosphates, for... Uh, Certainly for all forms of graphite, there was one graphite company that was selling only to a golf club manufacturer because it had the right size flake for graphite shafts on the golf clubs. And that was its only client. Interesting. So is, is what you're essentially getting at here is we're going to see that demand spike happen. So then you're going to see a bunch of these mines start coming online and getting the funding that they need. While right now, essentially, like all these resources are available in the ground, but no one's had any reason to even bother trying to get them up, right? Well, you and I have talked about scandium. Mm -hmm. Scandium is number one on the period, 21 on the periodic table. Until last year, it was a $60 million a year market. Negligible, right? You spend more than that on guitar strings in a year. There. But in January, Rio Tinto, the world's largest uh, uh, aluminum company, announced it would start making a skew for scandium. That's interesting. Then in February, it announced it had made its first sale to an aircraft services company. And with a little digging, you find out that's a service company that provides services to Boeing. With more digging, you found out that the scandium being sold was actually in 3D printer ink. And Boeing's service provider is printing out the parts on site. Uh, there are three parts it's printing out. I forget what they are. But they're printing them out on site, saving on shipping and saving on weight. Scandium is important because when you add it to aluminum, it makes the aluminum stronger, but less massive. Can you think of any industry that wants to be stronger, but way less? I no. mean, most of them, Everything. most of them, honestly, yeah. Right, you look at airplanes where they used to have paper napkins and now they've gone to that chip cardboard thing for your drink uh, because it's half the weight of paper. That's the level of detail they pay attention to on an airplane. So if I can make them a toilet that weighs 20% less by 3D printing it, you know they're going to do it. So the global market for Scandium is going to take off. And companies like Scandium International, run by George Putnam, and uh, uh, Imperial Mining, run by Peter Cashin, these companies are just going to fly. Yeah, so so as we as we look at 2022, you're, you're seeing a lot, a lot of things at play here. But it looks yep. like, in general... We have inflation coming. That's unavoidable. I think I think pretty much everyone's accepted that now. But if you haven't, you need to just go do some more research. We've already seen a little bit this year, and it's not going to get this. Of every five U.S. dollars ever printed, twenty percent of them were printed in the past year. Yeah, that's a big. Ow. Yeah, and it's, it's it isn't just even a U.S. phenomenon right now. It's no. it's going to be the whole world, unfortunately. But on top of that, we're seeing increased demand for a lot of these these. You can say pretty much all these battery metals, all these, pretty much every essential metal to speak of is kind of having an increase in demand. So we're going to see an increase in demand, probably going to see a lot more, a lot more operations come online. And are you predicting then 2022 being the, the real bull run for all metals? 
I'd say for most, there's always going to be a laggard, something sure. left behind. Um, I don't know what that's going to be. Palladium and platinum had a good run, so they're probably due for a flame out soon. That's fair. Uh, right. They're smaller metals that you know, people just piled into. Copper is uh, looking pretty good too. The, the biggest problem I see with copper is the mines take a little bit, a little bit of time to come online and I don't see the demand getting met in 2022. Yep. And Chile and Peru um, are becoming less friendly mining jurisdictions. And those two countries produce a lot of the world's copper. Um, also cobalt as a uh, side metal, as a secondary metal. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what's going to happen out of those countries. We do need new mines coming on site. I do think what we're going to see is more of a revisiting of existing mines. There's an old saying that the best place to find a mine is in the shadow of a head frame. There's been a lot of gold found around that head frame up in Timmins and Schumacher. Um, so you're going to see tailings revisited, slag revisited, waste rock at surface. What often happens, I can tell you one mine in particular, the Washington mine in Idaho, uh, geologically, the gold mine, the gold veins, and the silver veins are set down in different time periods. That's only important because the geologist can recognize the different rock. So, hey, we're going to mine the gold, but when silver's at 70 cents an ounce, we don't care. So they hoisted all the silver to the surface and dumped it. And I'm involved in a company that's actually looking at that, so that's why I know about it. Um, you're going to see more situations like that with the revisiting of tailings, slag, waste rock, and old workings. Yeah, Peter, I think where, where we're sitting right now, the technology's progressed so much further that we're able to get more, more dollar, more, we're able to get more per dollar that we put into it now. I mean, there's a lot of projects that, that aren't, weren't economically viable, and now they are, and the technology is better. And even just the technology to find the actual locations now is getting significantly better and cheaper as well. I mean, you can look at all sorts of things. You can look at now the use of drones where it used to be either a plane or a helicopter to actually do surveying now. So the, the, the costs are decreasing. CBLT owns a property in Quebec where that happened. Uh, it's a, called Chilton Cobalt, Nickel Copper Cobalt Chromium, no rare earths. We got a quote to fly it from a helicopter company for $65,000. We got a drone company to fly it, cost $15,000. They put a guy in a bucket, lifted him above the tree line, and he just visibly observed the drone flying the property for 15 grand. Yeah. Part of it also is ego. I had this conversation with Peter Bell. Every geologist wants to have a mine named after her or him, um, right? It's, it's no fun reworking somebody else's work. Mm -hmm. like, nobody ever became famous being a preferred fund share, man uh, preferred share fund manager. Like, oh, I manage pref shares. Like, good for you. It's the same kind of thing reworking somebody else's mind. Yeah. Right? You'd rather go find your own as a geologist than rework somebody else's work. But having said that, you look at Troilus Gold in Quebec. Uh, the prior owner exhausted the resource estimate. Troilus went back in, and they've gone from zero ounces to six million ounces in about three years. They have six drills turning and back of the envelope, they're probably closer to 8 million ounces of gold in a three-year period. Oh My Gold down in Guyana did the same thing with the old Oh My property. There was a pit, the pit ended, and the owner left. The new group went in, drilled under the pit, and found extensive mineralization. So this happens all around the world, and it should happen more because it's cheaper. Yeah, I think um, I think you touched on an important point there when you said ego. The fact of the matter is, a lot of people in the mining industry are kind of adventurers and explorers at heart, and they want to go find they want to go find gold. That's just how it is, and you know what? That it is exciting, right? But at the end of the day, it, you have to succeed, right? You're you're aiming for success, and it's important to to do calculative risk. And like you said, the best place to find find gold is where there's probably already gold at some point, where people found traces of it and then gave up on it. Yep. It's like fishing, right? If you pull one out, you're probably going to pull more out. Exactly, exactly. So, all right, Peter, listen, thank you for coming on. I know it's getting late in the holiday season. Hope everybody's getting warm, cozy, getting to see family and so on. Peter, do you have any remarks, people, before the end of the year? It's been a tough year for everybody. If you said you had an easy 2021, then you're an incredibly fortunate person. So be nice to the people around you. Help out where you can. Go work at the food bank. Donate. Uh, you know, my partner, Brian hates to hear it, but I say, let, we're all in this together. So let's work together. Um, he hates it because he says politicians say it and don't mean it, but we are in this together. 
So let's, let's have a great 2022. Very well said, Peter. You know, coming out of 2020, we said 2021 was going to be our year. And, you know, it was still a relatively hard year. But I continue that optimism as well. 2022 will be better. And it will be through us sticking together and looking out for one another. So happy holidays to everybody watching. Hope you all have a wonderful 2022. And I will see you there. Have a wonderful Thanks, day. Thanks, Michael. Peter.